Okay, um, we're soon going to start with our last talk. Um, our last talk is a bit different. We're going to hopefully play games. <laughs> so um, let's see what Bitbox is. Okay, well, thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, I would like to present you the Bitbox. So uh, I will run the presentation from the uh, small console itself. So I hope everything is all right. Uh, and I will take the different slides through my uh, gamepad. Uh, so the Bitbox is a do-it-yourself project, a personal project that is now currently being made with uh, several other people. It's a hardware and software project. So, uh, what's the button? That's this one. Uh, I will first introduce you uh, what were the goals uh, to present uh, what I wanted to do uh, with the Bitbox. Uh, to have a general presentation of what it's capable to do, how it relates to other uh, small com video game consoles, because it's about video games. Uh, then a hardware, how is a hardware uh, design and what's inside it? Uh, and then the different levels of software. You will see the architecture is quite simple. Uh, well, first, the goal was to make a modern, do-it-yourself and simple video game console. Modern, not in the sense that, um, not in the Xbox modern uh, style, but in the modern sense that uh, you wouldn't have to uh, Find, uh, try hard to find uh, peripherals, for example, to find cartridges, etc. Uh, the idea was to keep the environment uh, quite modern with SD cards, for example, with USB, uh, USB game pads, etc. Uh, but to play uh, all the games, maybe, because it would need to be do-it-yourself, so anyone could be able to do it uh, in his, uh, in his uh, attic or... Uh, um, in his own house without any particular tools uh, besides a small uh, soldering iron, for example, uh, and be able to source the component uh, without having to uh, build uh, hundreds of thousands. Uh, so simple uh, to build, simple to program. So everything has been special case, of course. Nothing is portable, and uh, that's part of the fun. Uh, there is no operating system. Everything is very simple, and keep it simple from start to finish. Uh, and it's still a video game console uh, with games. So uh, retro gaming uh, means old school, uh, meaning for me a nice, simple, and fun type of games, uh, which we could be able to uh, reproduce uh, with an in-house uh, made hardware. Uh, the do-it-yourself hardware is generally low spec in order to uh, be able to build it, uh, to build it yourself, to solder it uh, yourself. Uh, so using retro gaming type of games, of course, uh, which one is perfectly natural. Um, there are many people who are trying to do emulation uh, or trying to uh, re replay uh, on games on real hardware, but they're quite difficult to find or to uh, maintain. For example, those old uh, Atari or uh, old Amigas or old uh, Nintendo uh, can be difficult to, uh, to find or to find peripherals for or to repay. Uh, software emulator are maybe not the real deal because uh, you're uh, seeing small different glitches and uh, you don't have the feeling to have, well, you just have a computer with some very nice games on them, but it's not, uh, not the same thing exactly. And there are hardware emulator. Uh, for where they are, uh, we don't see very much, but there are older, well, new, old, uh, Atari ST or recreation with FPGA, well, was our drive, level hacking, but sometimes used to reproduce bugs, which is a bit of a shame to put so much resources and intellectual uses just to reproduce some past design because it would be simpler to just throw everything. Well, that's one of the principles, throw everything and just start from scratch and whatever. Um, one of the interesting elements uh, was to uh, code in the retro way, meaning no operating system, uh, direct uh, direct uh, hacking of the hardware uh, for different graphics, have a fixed um, hardware and try to code and try to find what you can do with this, but having a fixed, uh, a fixed hardware. Uh, I put no frameworks, there is, well, you just have the URC compiler and the first byte yet that you execute and uh, you write everything that will be executed in your game. So uh, there is a direct, uh, uh, take on the material and the uh, hardware, uh, well, which is quite different from the modern kind of program. Um, so my goal was to emulate 16-bit uh, like console or 16-bit era uh, computer uh, kind of games. Um, well, you can see uh, here on the left, 
well, it's quite, quite blurry, but uh, the Zeldas and Metroids uh, in the 8-bit or 16-bit, um, well, I wanted to, to, to emulate or to replicate maybe uh, the 16-bit look, uh, look and feel because it's, I think it's better graphically and not too complicated to do, well, possible at least. Uh, I wanted it to be as simple as possible, as I said, and to be able to play on a TV because console games are played on a big TV, uh, not like your, your uh, Nintendo Game Boy thing. And uh, of course, everything uh, is in the open, so uh, the tool chain is completely open. Uh, there is no binary blob driver, uh, unlike, for example, the Raspberry Pi, uh, which is an awesome board, but uh, which you can't replicate uh, in your uh, in your house. Uh, you cannot uh, buy the chip. You cannot, uh, except if you buy, uh, I don't know how many, hundreds of thousands by Broadcom. Uh, it's very difficult because it's a four-layer uh, PCB. Uh, so everything... Uh, I would invest it to be simple and completely open, of course. Uh, so, as well for the code if, uh, and uh, the hardware, uh, the the hardware design. Uh, so, to keep it simple, uh, the idea was to have only one chip, uh, so no external memory, everything in a microcontroller. So a big, a bigger microcontroller that you, that the one you can find in the Arduino, but uh, only one microcontroller with everything inside. Uh, no FPGA because it can be quite expensive. Uh, it can be uh, quite tricky to find in the packages easy to solder, for example. Uh, no external RAM flash because, uh, well, you have to route uh, high-speed signals on your PCB board. It can be quite complex. Uh, as cheap as possible because the Raspberry Pi is 35 euros, so uh, there is no point in making a lower board uh, for 10 times the price of a Raspberry Pi. Uh, there is make no sense. So, and simply sourceable, you should be able to go to your electronic shop and uh, get the components. Well, uh, modern interfaces to be able to interface with off the shelf query flows and simple to manufacture. Uh, so, it was okay to use double sided PCB, for example, which can be made at home or can be ordered uh, quite cheaply. Uh, it's not okay to have a several layer. Uh, PCB for a four-layer PCB or more. Uh, yeah, uh, for uh, SMD soldering uh, was okay because it's possible uh, to solder by hand. Um, so TQFP kind of packages for chips were okay. Not not BGA, for example, which has extremely small bolts, and you you quite need to have some specialized hardware to solder. Uh, so. Let's just have a look at different kind of consoles. Uh, on the left, we have the Xbox One type of hardware, which has eight core CPU, 1.7 gigahertz, a gig of RAM, uh, 50 gigabyte Blu-ray to get, uh, and on the right, you have the tiny 2330 uh, Pong uh, console, which I've built once. Uh, so you have 128 bytes of RAM on this one, which is seven, 70 millions less than the other one. Um, 2K, uh, 2 kilobytes of flash. Uh, well, between the Xbox, which is Xbox One, which is very uh, powerful but quite closed, and uh, and quite powerful, yeah, and the Atita uh, Pong, which is quite open but limited to one game, uh, and uh, and quite small. Uh, there should be some intermediate respect. Uh, on the 8-bit side, uh, the Nintendo, for example, had a almost 2 megahertz processor, 2 kilobytes of RAM small. Um, the, cartridge, the cartridge were around 32K to 1 megs of RAM, uh, and you output uh, 256 to 24, uh, 24 um, pixels. The use box is another project uh, of do-it-yourself uh, console uh, that has been made before by, by another guy. You can see that the specs are quite similar for 8-bit games, except for uh, the uh, CPU uh, speed which is almost 20 times more. And the fact that, of course, there is no uh, dedicated uh, GPU because uh, the NES had a dedicated GPU to uh, render tiles and sprites uh, on the screen. Um, the use bus doesn't have uh, such kind, so everything is emulated in hardware. So you're um, trading uh, specialized hardware for uh, megahertz. Um, well, I was aiming for 16-bit, so Super Nintendo was what I was roughly aiming for in kind of uh, look and feel of the games. Uh, you can see there that um, 
it's roughly similar in the, to uh, the preceding slide in that we're trading a uh, special GPU with Bryson types uh, for higher uh, megahertz. I use uh, an IRM STM32, uh, so ST Microelectronics uh, chip for that, which is quite powerful for a microcontroller because it has 182 uh, kilobytes of RAM, which is quite small compared to uh, some uh, board that you might uh, implement Linux on, but um, it's exactly the same level of RAM uh, that you can have a Super Nintendo. Uh, the output, well, I, I will get back to uh, the output, but uh, it's kind of the resolution, the native resolution is 600 by 480, which is what you're saying right there, um, compared to the TV uh, output of the Super Nintendo, for example, which is quite smaller resolution. Uh, but if you want for a game to look, well, somewhat acceptable uh, on modern screen, you have to, a high, to, to, to get the resolution a bit higher, which is more demanding for your uh, CPU. Uh, but apart from that, everything is quite on the same level, except that you're trading megahertz for custom hardware. And uh, just as, as a bit of comparison, uh, the Raspberry Pi, uh, which I have, again, nothing against, uh, is, uh, as you can see, a thousand, a thousand times more uh, memory, for example. Uh, there is a dedicated video core GPU, so we're not in the same league. We may be a hundred times less powerful, uh, a little bit less, uh, well, than that for, uh, for the CPU, but for everything else, we're not in the same league than the Raspberry Pi. It's very simple and it's more like a Super Nintendo kind of level of hardware. Uh, so first, the development was on the um, developing board, uh, so quite cheaply. Here is the first uh, for GPUs made of a bunch of resistors and uh, <laughs> So everything was, made, yeah, I, I don't know, uh, you have here in the preceding slide for a grand total maybe of 20 bucks of uh, material. Um, and finally, I uh, managed to get some, uh, to synthesize in real time uh, the VGO signal. So being able to output an image was a kind of an accomplishment uh, <laughs> for the project, uh, which is, it was not a moving uh, picture. It was not a static picture, but uh, the fact that it, yeah, it was, uh, quite a nice uh, accomplishment for, uh, for the project. So uh, currently, the Bitbox Provision 2 uh, has uh, two, um, connects uh, to two full-size USB hosts to be able to connect to a USB game packs, for example, which are quite easily to find. Um, the core, of course, the STM32 F405. Uh, you get um, an external connectors and the stereo line out to uh, the element, uh, to the um, loudspeaker uh, or whatever you plug in the line out, and uh, the VGA out with a 15-bit resistor of DAC directly plugged in the SEM32, which has, again, uh, no GPU. There is nothing uh, particularly uh, tailored for video in this chip. Uh, it's just a general uh, microcontroller, uh, quite a generic uh, microcontroller. There is, there is nothing uh, for outputting um, video or processing images, for example. Um, oops, okay. And here is the, uh, yeah, and here is the board. Uh, there is one in there if you want to have a look. Uh, so you find uh, the dual USB hosts, which are full uh, size USB to be able to plug it simply, uh, not micro USB. Here is a micro USB for uh, power, uh, the user button extension port, which I will get back to uh, after that, uh, reset button, audio out, and the VGA, the big VGA. Uh, you can see that most of the size is taken uh, by uh, connectors. Uh, so first, a little bit about the hardware. Uh, what's in a game console? Well, you need CPU, RAM, and flash. That's everything inside the microcontroller that's taken care. Uh, you need to output video, make sound, handle input peripherals, have some master age, and handle some game transfer. Uh, the chosen uh, microcontroller was the STM32 F4 with one meg uh, of flash, so it allowed some more complex games that uh, very simple one uh, that, well, you can begin to have uh, some uh, quite complex game. It costs around seven euro, well, you have to, pan, you have to buy uh, 10,000 of them, but uh, <laughs> if you want, you, you can buy one, and uh, it's, uh, I don't know, maybe twice that price, a uh, little bit less, so, well, we need, of course, everything to be uh, always cheaper. Remember Raspberry Pi, 35 euros. 
Uh, okay, so that mostly that. How to generate a video signal? To generate a video signal, you just have to remember how it felt like 50 years ago to generate a black and white video signal from the TV. You have the uh, beam, uh, electron beam, which is getting to the top left to the bottom right in ranges of uh, electrons. And you modulate the power of this signal with your uh, signal. So if you go to one volt to get white, and you get to uh, 0.3 volt to get black. And you make that uh, change in time uh, during the time. And during the time, your beam is going from left to right. And then you have to go back to the left. So you are outputting synchronization signals back to zero volts. That's a small dot there, uh, element there, um, to tell the beam to get back. And there is some very simple circuitry, and uh, it's a very nice hack to be able to produce images that way. Um, that was black and white, quite simple to understand, and it's uh, the same thing today for black and white television. Or uh, what about color? For color, you need uh, three components, red, green, blue, basically, or um, since that would better fit uh, in, with the ancient and uh, you have to be compatible with the black and white signal. So uh, you send the luminance and then you send with the, for the composite signal for one, um, for, for, for one, um, sorry, I forgot the name. Um, well, merci. Uh, if you have to, to transmit everything in one wire, you transmit a uh, modulated color, which is quite complicated to achieve um, by yourself uh, if you want to recreate that. Uh, you can have a super video, for example, uh, where Luma, uh, which is uh, black or white, and Chroma are separated, or you can have components, Y, and differences to uh, the luminance, uh, blue and red on, on three wires. But the most simpler thing to do and the more uh, ubiquitous plug uh, to find because you need to find screens to plug to uh, is a VGA because for the VGA you have five elements the uh, synchronization the vertical synchronization to tell the beam to go back uh, up uh, the uh, horizontal synchronization red green and blue well that's the five wires uh, that you have on any uh, VGA board so it's very simple to generate a video signal you just have to output those five signals in the right time uh, separately, you don't have to. Uh, uh, you, you have, yeah. You, you don't have to mix them into one wire, so it's quite easy. Uh, what's very important, of course, to generate a video signal uh, is video timings. You have for one line uh, on the top there. It's one line. Uh, you have the sync signal. Uh, then you have to wait for uh, 50 uh, around 50 pixels. Then you have 640. Um, pixel to generate, and that's one line. And then you have to do that again and again and again for each line. So you don't have, you, you cannot um, not be uh, completely synchronized because if you shift by one pixel, for example, so that's a, a very small uh, amount of time, uh, you will have a completely distorted image. And a very small number of time means that, what? Okay. Uh, if you want to output standard VGA resolution, uh, at 60 frames per second, for, for example, that means 25 megahertz. So you have to generate a 25 megahertz from a 160 uh, megahertz uh, microcontroller. So that means that you have seven CPU cycles to generate uh, each pixels. And if you shift by more than uh, seven cycles, well, your image will be disordered. Uh, here are the key features of the stm 32 f 4 that will be used. I simplified a little bit this one. Um, you use the GPIO uh, of the microcontroller to output, of course, uh, the signal. Use the DMA. There is a DMA inside. What's a DMA uh, for those that you don't know? Then uh, a DMA is a small element of uh, silicon that can output, uh, that can copy some part of the memory to other other part of the memory. So you can prepare a buffer for one line and tell the DMA transfer it to the GPIO IO address in memory. And then, since it's a bit of silicon and it's not the microcontroller who does this, it's very precise uh, in time. So you can go off and prepare the next line, prepare the next buffer line, and tell the DMA to output that to the GPIO. 
Uh, then the, you're using uh, the uh, other elements that are within uh, the microcontrollers, the USB, for example, uh, because there is a USB controller inside, SDIO uh, to output and uh, to maybe input and output for the, uh, uh, for the SD card. Uh, some uh, digital analog converter for the audio. For the video, it's much too fast to output video, but for the audio, uh, you could, of course, uh, use this one. Um, Oh, sorry, what's happening? <laughs> it's a demo effect, of course. Okay, let's reboot. Well, you can see that it's quite easy to reboot. Okay. Oh, going too fast. Okay. Okay. Um, for the output, uh, the signal output is output on 15 um, wires of your microcontroller, then you have a simple resistive DAC, and then you output for each of the color, red, green, and blue, uh, to the VGO signal. So it's very straightforward from the microcontroller directly to the VGA signal. Then, uh, what about the sound? Uh, you have an internal dual DAC on the STM32F4, so it's quite very easy. You just output the wires, uh, you go through some low-pass, high-pass uh, electronic filtering in order to improve a little bit the signal and then out to uh, your line out. So it's very simple. As you can see there, you get your microcontroller pins there, left and right, you go to small filtering and output to the jack. Here is the connectivity of the USB. Yeah, you got the uh, connectivity for the USB direct to the microcontroller. Then you add some connectors for the uh, SD card there, directly to the microcontroller, a user button, just in case you have to reboot, might happen, uh, some uh, debugging port, uh, some power uh, adapter there, some two LEDs, one for power, one for uh, user LED, uh, just to be able to test if we can blink a LED. And then you have the whole, ah, no, <laughs> sorry, no, not the whole one. There is an expression port uh, also uh, in order to be able uh, to connect external uh, gadgets uh, to the console. Uh, I reused an existing specification of an uh, uh, expression port, uh, which is named UX. Uh, basically, there were two main uh, possibilities. Uh, the Arduino shield, it's big, but it's not very useful for that kind of uh, that, that kind of uh, microcontroller because, and that kind of board because every, well, many of the existing Arduino boards are already inside. For example, for the Arduino, you get uh, video output, which is inside, sound output, which is inside, uh, SD card, for example, so, and it's big. Uh, so uh, there wasn't much uh, room uh, on the board. So I opted for another one, uh, which is a UX, uh, an existing standard, uh, where you just route uh, a serial, um, connectivity, SPI, I2C. Uh, there is a very simple connector, it's not at all proprietary, and there exists a lot of uh, external uh, uh, things that you can buy and connect to the bitbox. So I haven't tried to connect them uh, for now because I was focusing, we were focusing on the, on the bitbox. Uh, but it exists, uh, IRDR, Raspberry Pi, uh, adapters for Raspberry Pi, LCD, Bluetooth, GSM, Wi-Fi, biofeedback, you can, uh, plug yourself to the big box. Uh, gyroscopic input, thermometer, wind and chuck uh, adapters, etc. cetera. Uh, it's do it yourself ready because it's very simple. Uh, it's almost the whole spec that you have there. Uh, and it's available, it's very available. Okay, so you might not see it, but it's a summing up of everything we've seen before. We have seen everything before. Uh, and it's a whole uh, hardware for the beatbox. So it's very simple, we've just seen them in uh, half, I don't know, 10 minutes. Uh, so here is a PCB which was routed from the preceding elements and uh, the physical resolution. Now for the software, um, for the tool chain for that kind of uh, microcontroller, uh, generally there are uh, proprietary uh, tool chains, but uh, I use GCC and GDB uh, for ARM uh, bare to, for the bare metal uh, 
uh, compiler. So you can use GCC to transform your C to O uh, file, uh, a standard linker uh, to generate ELF files, object dump to extract from the ELF files uh, file the right binaries. It's very straightforward. And uh, the make files generally maybe, I, I don't know, 20 lines long. It's very simple to redo everything by hand or just to compile without any make file. It's very simple. Um, you can use, one of the big thing is that you can use GDB directly on the chip. There is an exp uh, debugging port and you can plug it uh, using a third party board which can cost maybe 10 euros uh, to be able to do step-by-step -step execution on the console, to read everything in the memory, to load some elements to the RAM. So it's very nice because you can debug uh, without having to resort to a lead blinking debug, which is quite uh, painful. Uh, <laughs> and now you have complete view of what's happening inside from your PC, so it's very nice to see step-by-step -step your code uh, from what's happening within, within the microcontroller. Uh, so the developing uh, uh, can be done on Ubuntu or other elements, uh, but on Ubuntu is very straightforward. Windows, uh, some people ask me whether they can develop games from Windows, it's possible. Uh, and Mac, I don't know. So here is a software stack. You have the hardware and you put your game binary on it and you just run it. <laughs> that was <laughs> nice, and fine. Uh, there is no operating system, of course. There is only one process, there is only one user. It's very straightforward. However, well, it's your game, but with your game, you have to set up the VGA uh, DMA, for example. You have to set up the, uh, the timers to be able uh, to run your DMA. You have to uh, initialize the clocks uh, tree uh, because there are several clocks for several ports of the uh, element. Uh, you have to have a USB stack with a USB HID parser. Uh, if you want to process the events that are sent by different gamepads, for example. And you have to implement the SDIO uh, interface to FAT32 uh, to be able to read what's on Okay, well, it's a little bit painful. Well, you can do it all by yourself, but you can also reuse some existing uh, libraries. So uh, the more fuller uh, software stack uses some uh, library for VGI, USB, sound, etc. I call this the kernel. It's absolutely not a kernel. It's just a set of libraries that, can, that you link to your game or you can choose or not to, to use them. Uh, with an interface which is uh, made available in only one uh, bitbox.hc uh, file. Everything is programmed in C. There is no assembly. Well, you can put some assembly, of course, in it, but uh, everything uh, has been programmed in C for now. Um, the kernel, so, uh, is a kind of API or, or an SDK, in fact, more than a, a real kernel. Uh, it's a small set of low-level drivers. Uh, everything compi is compiled in-game, and there is no specific algorithm in there. There is no engine, there is no uh, bleater, etc. It's very simple. You have two interfaces. The first one is uh, fill the buffer. Fill, uh, here is the line you are on. Fill the buffer for that line, and then uh, the uh, engine will take care of putting that uh, to the screen or outputting that uh, to the different elements, uh, electronic elements to the screen. And then for the next line, you will be woken up again by an interrupt. So you just have to provide one, uh, one method, uh, which is a fill line, uh, line game line uh, with a, a pointer to your buffer, and the same for the audio. And another one for uh, what part of your game, which will be uh, woken up every frame, every vid video frame, I don't know, to, to take care of the, uh, of the buttons uh, of the user, for example, to uh, move uh, the different sprites on screen, etc. And that's it. So you have three uh, functions to implement with that kind of uh, API to be able to, uh, to, to use uh, the, the different uh, elements. Uh, there is an HID uh, parser and a simple interface to hide the complexity of the USB stacks, which may be is uh, the most painful element to reproduce if you want to uh, throw everything out. Uh, for the rest, it's very straightforward. Uh, every, well, I don't know, the whole kernel, maybe, uh, I don't know, several hundred line of C. It's not, maybe one, maybe 1,000 max. So it's not very complicated. Um, okay, there is an emulator, which is not really an emulator. In fact, it's an implementation of the bitbox.h file uh, on SDL. So you can test your game on your PC and then you can port it and you can compile it uh, for the bitbox. So it just, you, you just call the high-level part of your game, you compile it for the, uh, with the SDL backend, 
and you just run it uh, on your PC to be able to, uh, not to have to upload it uh, each time for the, uh, on, the, uh, on the device. Um, what compiles and runs with big box, so for your in, inside of the big box, uh, can be emulated generally as is. Uh, everything is reproduced uh, generally. You have to be careful with the reciprocal, of course, because uh, if you have, uh, I don't know, four cores with uh, two, mega, uh, two gigahertz, uh, well, it's easy to go overboard on functions and uh, not to have enough CPU left uh, on that very small uh, device because, and you have very small, uh, very small memory left. So just remember that you have 100K of memory to put everything in, uh, in RAM. Uh, however, uh, one guy, uh, have made a uh, game just with the emulator, send, send it to me, I compiled it, and it runs first time, it, it ran first time uh, on the big box. So it can happen that you can code directly with your PC and then you upload it uh, to the big box, or you, you just recompile it, and it worked first time, and it didn't have the, uh, the device, but it ran first time uh, for the device, which was very nice for him. And after that, he built the big box <laughs> itself. Um, Okay, uh, well, that's mean nonsense. <laughs> uh, graphics compression is necessary. Uh, you don't have enough room uh, in the whole memory to store one frame buffer. So when you've blitzed uh, the last line, you don't remember, the bitbox cannot remember what it, blitzed, what it blitzed on the beginning of the frame, or not even two lines before. So you cannot store graphics uh, completely uncompressed within the box. You have to compress it. You have to compress it, but and you need to be able to decompress it on the fly, line by line. So uh, it's um, a few, um, I think it's uh, 15, no, it's 31 kilohertz per second. So at 31 kilohertz per second, you need to be able to output a line and decompress it. So you have only seven cycles per PC to decompress it and run your game. Uh, so you have to compress, you, but you have to be uh, clever, but not too clever for, you, for your CPU to compress uh, everything on memory. Uh, one frame is almost a whole flash memory. And so if you want to make a photo frame with one, uh, one photo, you can, but it's not very useful. You have to compress to, to do anything. Um, it needs to be also simple to modify your image because uh, a game is a moving image answering to real time events. So you need to be able to modify uh, your uh, compressed uh, graphics to be able to output on screen. So. Uh, for example, it's very difficult to compress RLE, uh, very simple uh, run, length, run length encoding uh, compression. Uh, instead of saying 20 pixel blue, you just output 20 and then blue. Uh, that's nice, but it's not very simple to modify online because uh, this compression is very static. So you need to find some ways to do that. There are several ones. Uh, for this, uh, there are some other libraries that you can choose not to, which implement that such kind of renderers. Uh, there are different uses and different solutions. First, there is a text mode, which is a simple way to compress uh, uh, an image made of text. Uh, you get, uh, well, a standard text mode. You just write some uh, characters to a bunch of RAM and the kernel uh, and the uh, different uh, subsystems take, take, take care of everything. So you can start with that to develop uh, with a beatbox. Uh, there are other modes with a graphical frame buffer. So there uh, you have to reduce something. So generally you reduce either the resolution or the number of, of uh, colors on screen with the palette. So either you use a palette or you decrease the resolution, general, generally both. You can go up to 800 by 600, uh, by the way, but there isn't much to do uh, if you go like that. Um, and then there is 2D engine, which I go back to, with tiles. Uh, so a tile engine uh, made in software and with uh, sprite uh, bleating which is the most useful to make games, but the other one can be useful to make some smaller, smaller games. Uh, so you, you define different uh, in C, different objects, and uh, you instantiate and move them on screen, and the bleater takes care of outputting that uh, to, the, um, to the different lines of output. Then, sorry, okay. Sound engines, there are also sound engines. Uh, if you don't want to output everything by hand, uh, well, there is a simple mixer sampler uh, to play and resample audio from Flash, for example. So you just put in your Flash some notes and some music and you tell the sampler to mix everything and to uh, change the uh, sampling rate on the fly to be able to uh, output uh, notes and music and uh, special uh, explosions. And uh, well, you can import MIDI files uh, as, uh, 
static files uh, within uh, this uh, engine. There's also mod modified player, like the old tracker modified, maybe you do remember those ones. Um, and uh, there, are other, uh, there are other simple things uh, for um, uh, square and uh, more uh, chip tunes like sounds. If you want to make some games, uh, someone contrib contributed uh, simpler uh, chip tunes uh, like uh, sounds uh, and a synthesizer. And there is a tracker inside it. Uh, so here is a more fuller software stack with different layers, which you can get completely rid of and program uh, from scratch, of course. Um, one of the uh, fun things, well, the project is trying to do something with uh, a hardware that, that isn't made for. So uh, I tried to, uh, to have full motion video to be able to run a, a video full screen uh, at, um, uh, um, at a live uh, speed. Uh, so you need to, to have to store one frame in RAM. You cannot do inter-frame compression because you cannot remember the past frame. So you have to stay to keep one frame in memory each time. Uh, so I developed a more new codec, uh, which, uh, well, allows to have some uh, crude quality output video uh, with two bits per pixel, which makes it fit in a whole um, uh, full screen. So you can uh, store that and then you stream uh, 54, 64 uh, kilobytes per frame uh, to output video on the fly. So uh, yeah, there is a Python encoder, which is very f slow and very low quality. As you can see, uh, the presentation has been compressed with that uh, codec. Uh, here is some, yeah, so that is a kind of picture that you can output um, with the um, uh, with the beatbox and with the, that kind of encoder. Uh, so you have to reduce the resolution, you have to reduce everything, so you have to be quite clever in how you, uh, and you have to be fast to decompress because you only have seven uh, here. Yeah, you, you have to decompress everything on the fly and when you're writing uh, this one to the screen, you have completely forgotten that you just uh, yeah, decompressed uh, the, the lower part of the image, for example. You, you redo everything every time. Uh, sorry, some example pics, for example. Uh, yeah, there is a video example, but uh, maybe I have time to, 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 to show it. Um, the program transfer can be done through the internal uh, estim the bootloader from the chip, but you have to transfer it, it's quite slow. So uh, I made a bootloader uh, within uh, the chip. So to be able to transfer, and uh, you, you've seen this, uh, to be able to transfer the program from the SD card. Uh, however, a bootloader has to be resident, it's only on chip, you don't have much uh, room in the chip to store it generally, it has to be small, so, so, and it has to be stable and safe, you don't want to update the bootloader every time you, uh, there is a new version. However, selecting a file on screen with GamePy and loading them from the micro SD to the flash, uh, it's quite a complex task in fact, because uh, for the console, uh, at least, because you have to use FAT, SDIO, USB, VGA, flash programming, uh, output of the text on screen, uh, so you have to a font, uh, a graphical font uh, to be included, etc. So it's quite big. And then uh, another small thing is that you cannot run from Flash if you want to program the Flash. So th there was a problem. Uh, so the bootloader is in two stages. The first one is always inside, it's very small. It just knows how to uh, uh, load uh, the second stage bootloader to RAM. And then from the, RAM, from the RAM, well, it's a normal program. It's just running from RAM except from Flash. And then you can program the Flash. And this one can be complex. It can be updated. It's just a file on the micro SD card. Some examples of programs. Uh, there is a port of GNU Boy, which is a Game Boy emulator. So you can run this emulator uh, on the, on the bitbox. So you can emulate 8-bit engines on this 32-bit. Uh, CPU, uh, you have to uh, well, remove much of the functionality for game saves, for uh, loading games from the SD card, for example, everything of that has been removed, but you can keep working games, you can make uh, Mario and Metroid uh, Game Boy uh, working. Uh, well, there, there is much to do, but you can do it. Uh, you, you, you can run those games. Uh, of course, uh, oh, sorry, only freeware games, because uh, you have to embed them in the Flash, so uh, it's, it's difficult to uh, to do that with uh, normal games. 
Uh, yeah, here are some game screenshots and uh, there is a small menu to select them at boot. Uh, this one is the uh, a bit box uh, to, to produce uh, some uh, battery sounds uh, with, a, with the microcontroller. So you select a different pads and it was some uh, sound uh, to, to make some rhythms. Uh, there is a, uh, yeah, small games uh, like that. Much of the uh, effort has been put into uh, making the whole thing work and making it simple to be able to work. So the games hopefully are coming. Uh, there are several ones coming. Ah, this one is a Boulder Dash uh, demonstration. Uh, yeah, it, well, it's a screenshot, uh, this one, but uh, yeah. Uh, there are other games and software, so 248 because it's quite simple. <laughs> Uh, there is Crappy Bird, which is a flappy bird, but very crappy one. Um, uh, which is why well, it's an example uh, to show how to do uh, a very simple get without uh, the engine. So everything is bare, everything from scratch, and it's uh, maybe 100 lines of C running directly on the Mitchell, not using USB connector, using the, the button uh, to, to run. It's very, very simple. Uh, there are many, many one, uh, well, yeah, there are some utilities, uh, video players, SDK examples, uh, there are many examples of the SDK, uh, USB device tester uh, to, yeah, because it's quite complex to, to handle the different uh, gamepad, keyboards, and mouse uh, differently, so the, there is a small tester for that, uh, which, so, so, so some of that, and many of them have, have been contributed by other people so for this one. Uh, there are many, and too much for uh, the types of the different people there. Uh, in progress games, uh, some should zoom up the so video based adventure, a beam racer, which kind of a racer a la, a la outrun, really, uh, but uh, it's a play and work with racing the beam, uh, which is uh, uh, the, um, the fact that you're racing, uh, the fact that the electron beam, uh, you have to produce uh, the image. Uh, but it's an expression that you found in, the old, uh, in old uh, consoles. Uh, there's Bomberman and Shadow of the Bit. Uh, yeah. What about the future? Uh, well, first, make games. Uh, improve, of course, the emulator, improve the engines, different engines, make them uh, smarter or more compressible. Um, you need to, but to make a game, you need to produce uh, graphics, to have to produce sound, you have to produce interesting gameplay, for example. Debug everything, of course. Uh, improve the kernel on the engine. Uh, maybe do some more 8-bit uh, emulators. Uh, NES should be quite dribble. Uh, ZX Spectrum, Sinclair. What is Spectrum uh, with a keyboard can be, I think, can be done uh, with a basic, maybe. Uh, playing with extensions, uh, one of those that I would like to play with are Wi-Fi and Nunchuk, because there is an accelerator, so it's quite, uh, can be fun. And uh, Wi-Fi, well, the SP8266 chip uh, is, very, is very inexpensive uh, Wi-Fi uh, component that you can add to your uh, project. I don't know, it's maybe, uh, five dollars uh, to have Wi-Fi, so it can be interesting to use them to add that on multiplayer <laughs> games. Uh, but not more core for hardware, because that's the whole point, is to have the limited but stable hardware. Um, yeah, that's it. A small uh, number of links. Uh, the first one is the main blog, where the whole uh, process, development process has been presented, and there are tutorials uh, from time to time presented and uh, the GitHub uh, part where everything is uh, detailed and uh, the source code of everything and the, uh, the files to be able to replicate this console by yourself uh, are, are present also. That's it. Do you have any questions? <laughs> yeah? Uh, <laughs> I'm not expecting this, I'm hoping for this, but uh, uh, yeah, why not? Yeah. No, no, but. Uh, I prefer to focus on games, but, uh, and I'm trying to make some libraries to ease the development of games, but uh, yeah, th there have been some demos with that uh, chip. Uh, not the console, but the chip itself, uh, th there have been some demonstrations. Uh, <laughs> Oh yeah, sorry. So, so, sorry, excuse me. Come on, sorry. Can can you play? Yes, of course, please. <laughs> please do. Let me check. Have a simple game there. 
Uh, yeah, while well, some people play, um, well, when you're game? leaving, please try to take some uh, trash with know. you and throw uh, it in the Denver. trash bins. Yeah. Thank you very much and see you next year. It's right in. Uh, now, uh, the bootloader here is loading uh, the program from the SD oh, okay. to the flash. So it's, it's writing. It's quite big. OK, that's done. Not now. No. <laughs> ah, could be interesting to test because the, uh, the, the parser is uh, handmade. So I don't know if, uh, yeah. I have no idea if it runs uh, standard HID. Uh, Okay, but then, oh. ah, it runs to the left, but not to the right. I don't know why. Can I take a picture? Of course, you can. Ah. Reboot again? No, it's my. I don't know what's happening with this. I cannot go to the left. Ah, that's. No? <laughs> this one can go to the left. Ah, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> okay, it's a game where you can do. Oh. Let's try another one. Ah, oh, sorry. That way, to load the bootloader, you have to press a button. Yeah. Those are very simple games because uh, that ha there hasn't been much time to uh, fireman. Let's try this one. This one is very simple. It's one of the earliest ones. Don't you don't know if you remember this one? So it's running 60 frames per second. Ah, my not my, my pad should be. Maybe the, the pad is broken. Uh, my pad seems to be broken. It cannot go to the left. <laughs> so maybe we can try with your pad. <laughs> ah, it's broken. Okay. I don't have much hope for this to run for the first time, so I'm not hovering my... Can you use the other one? No, because the game has been programmed to, to run on this one. So, is it working? Yeah! Woohoo! <laughs> and can we go to the left? Yes, we can. <laughs> okay, well, this one's very simple. It gets harder, but do you wanna try? Do you wanna try? <laughs> Now you have several ones. Yeah. At 20, I think you have two guys, and then you have three guys in program. Very nice, thank you. Oh, it's a, uh, I, no, 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 not on this game. No. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, uh, Sure, sure, please do.